We have an audio recording. Shut the f up. I'm not. Shut the f up. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is Kanye, hold on. Um, so, you know someone recorded you. Okay. Um, he said okay. When you were like upset about Taylor. The guy recorded the whole thing and someone has the audio. Everyone's favorite, love her or love to hate her, reality drama queen Kim Kardashian is under fire recently, with some shocking new details emerging from a previously old scandal that surprisingly was pushed under the rug. The scandal in question is concerning the ongoing feud between Taylor Swift and Kanye West, which all started when Kanye famously cut Taylor off at the MTV Video Music Awards in 2009 to announce that Beyonce had the greatest video of all time. Taylor, I I'm really happy for you. I'm gonna let you finish. But Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. But the feud turned downright nasty and illegal when Kim Kardashian, while she was still married to Kanye, leaked a recorded phone call between Taylor and Kanye, which turned Taylor's life upside down and hugely impacted her career. Now that Taylor has been named Time's Person of the Year, she is speaking out about the incident and sharing never before shared details about how Kim ruined her life. And she's out for blood, y'all. Taylor is not going to let this rest until the people responsible pay for their crimes. So what exactly does Taylor have to say about Kim's illegal tricks? Can Kim really face jail time for her action? Well, stay tuned to find out. Also make sure to hit that subscribe button to get the insider scoop on all of the hot gossip. All right, for those of you who might have missed it, in 2016, Kim leaked a three minute private phone conversation between Taylor Swift and her then husband, Kanye West. This was in response to Taylor saying that she wasn't informed about Kanye mentioning her in a song that he was working on. Taylor's rep released a statement saying Kanye never asked Taylor permission to do the song but he did ask if she would promote it on Twitter. The purpose behind sharing this audio clip was to paint Taylor as a liar, because in the call, Taylor supposedly approved a lyric in Kanye's song Famous, which referenced the fact that Kanye made Taylor famous. Like me and Taylor might still have sex, why I made that bitch famous. God damn! I made that bitch famous. However, the call that Kim shared was severely edited. At the time, fans sided with Kim and Kanye and the hashtag Kim exposed Taylor party began trending and people were commenting with snake emojis on Taylor's social media pages. Kim even doubled down on this a few months later when she posted about National Snake Day on Twitter. Her post read, Wait, it's legit National Snake Day? They have holidays for everybody. I mean, everything these days. This was followed by multiple snake emojis. The original call, which was a total of 25 minutes in length, tells a whole other story altogether. The transcript was shared in 2020, and this shares a lot more detail into what actually went down. At the heart of this conversation is two artists collaborating, and not a bitter rivalry that Kim made this whole thing out to be. In the actual account of the phone call, Kanye never confirmed with Taylor that he was going to use the B word in the lyric. That was the line that Taylor was not comfortable with, but she would be fine with, I made her famous without the addition of the B word. The line, I made that be famous, was the line that Taylor openly refuted saying that Kanye never told her that he was going to use that particular wording. That was when Super Snake Kim decided to jump into the mix and drop a heavily edited phone conversation, ultimately making Taylor look like a liar, when really the evidence was fabricated. There was one point in the conversation where Taylor says she needs to think about the song. She says, I need to think about it because you know, when you hear something for the first time, you just need to think about it because it's absolutely crazy. I'm glad it's not mean though. Kanye then tells Taylor, I'm going to send you the song and send you the exact wording and everything about it, right? And then we can sit and talk through it. According to sources on Taylor's team, the song was never shared. Taylor went to post on Instagram stating that she was never consulted about the use of the B word. She wrote, where is the video of Kanye telling me that he was going to be calling me that bitch in his song? It doesn't exist because it never happened. But the damage was already done and the blowback on this leak was huge. Taylor basically hid from the public for a year, facing so much backlash and negativity against her. And when she finally did return to the public eye, her new album reputation and tour was dark, filled with evil snake imagery to play on the serpentine emojis that Kim used in her tweets when she first launched this attack on Taylor. Now that Taylor is ruling the world, she's not afraid anymore. She doesn't have to hide from Kim's wrath, maybe because Kim doesn't have Kanye in her corner anymore and she's left to fight her battle solo. In a pretty revealing interview with Time for their 2023 Person of the Year issue, Taylor shares how she was affected by one of the lowest points in her career, which was the downfall of her career as a result of the infamous leaked phone call and feud with Kanye West and Kim Kardashian from 2016. Uh, it's a Good Friday, we're driving as a Good Friday song, so that's why I'm calling you that I wanted you to put the song out. It was a really tough period for Taylor, who thought that the incident was going to define her for the rest of her life. Taylor said she was getting cancelled within an inch of her life insanity. About the whole situation, Taylor says, 
You have a fully manufactured frame job in an illegally recorded phone call, which Kim Kardashian edited and then put out there to say to everyone that I was a liar. Make no mistake, my career was taken away from me. I thought that moment of backlash was going to define me negatively for the rest of my life. Taylor goes on to share that she had to move to another country to escape the negativity. She was even scared to trust anyone, let alone take phone calls with fear of being illegally recorded. But she doesn't leave without throwing one final jab at Kim saying, but I've also learned that there's no point in actively trying to quote unquote defeat your enemies. Trash takes itself out every single time. But we get it. In most cases, there is more to a story than both parties are letting on. So then if that's the case, surely an apology would just start the process to mend this relationship. Well, Kim hasn't even bothered to apologize to Taylor over almost blacklisting her. According to sources at TMZ, Kim's never apologized to Taylor for the call, and even after the Time article, it's still crickets. TMZ also shares that Taylor would be open to an apology from Kim, even with all of the time that has passed, but it would have to be done publicly. As one source at TMZ says, a public shaming calls for a public I'm sorry. No. What is also interesting about this whole situation is that Kim doubled down on her involvement in March of 2020, the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. Kim wrote on Twitter, to be clear, the only issue I ever had around the situation was that Taylor lied through her publicist who stated that Kanye never called to ask for permission. They clearly spoke, so I will let you all see that. Nobody ever denied the word bitch was used without her permission. Some fans are theorizing that Kim needed some sort of leverage to stay relevant when literally the world was focused on fighting a deadly virus. Like Kim, there are far more important issues on the docket right now. I'm not Kim, there's people that are dying. There are multiple fans on social media urging Taylor to sue Kim for sharing the phone call. However, according to TMZ, Taylor won't be able to prosecute over the video even though she didn't know she was being taped. California law has it that releasing a secretly recorded confidential communication is illegal, but it doesn't apply when a conversation may be overheard. Apparently, the full video shows producer Rick Rubin, who can be seen in the tape portions Kim released, and others joined the discussion, meaning that the conversation wasn't private and therefore not protected under the California law as written. But don't worry, Swift fans, Taylor will have her revenge. Now that the full transcript of the call has been leaked, everyone can see that Taylor had not approved the lyrics as the public was previously led to believe by Kim. Which makes Kim a sad little human who needs to pick on an innocent, actually talented artist to make herself relevant. Fans are coming for Kim, and there will be more evidence that will turn up out of the woodwork. On one of Kim's recent posts, one Swift fan posted, apologize to Tay, and another fan wrote, the Swifties are coming for blood. Fans are definitely Team Taylor. Here's what another fan had to say. People keep saying that Taylor can't let go of this grudge and is being petty. Um, Kim Ye literally tried to ruin her life after Kanye already came for the 19-year-old Taylor at the VMAs when she did absolutely nothing. And not to mention the edited illegally recorded call and the fact that Kanye put a naked wax figure of Taylor in his music video. Yeah, I'd hold on to that grudge forever too. Now people are coming for Kim, commenting snake emojis on her social media content, just like they had left on Taylor's posts in 2016. So really, the tables have turned and it's not going to stop there. Sources close to Taylor say that there are more details about this feud that are about to come out. But what do you think about this long-standing feud? Do you think Kim will get cancelled by Swift fans? What other secret drama do you think will come out now that this has been shared? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and thanks for watching.